Here's the big picture. In 1964, Fannie Lou Hamer, Dr. Aaron Henry, they were part of the Mississippi Freedom Delegation. So when we hear about um, civil rights, those are kind of names that come to mind. They went to the the 1964 Atlantic, New, Atlantic City, New Jersey uh, Democratic Convention, and they challenged, like they had this integrated um, delegation, and they challenged the all-white Mississippi delegation. And they, Fannie Lou Hamer, gave a famous speech uh, in front of the Credentials Committee and basically told her story about trying to go register to vote and getting arrested, getting beaten almost to death um, just for trying to, to register to vote. And th these are, you know, and you go, oh, okay, well, what does that have to do with the Democratic Party? That, that whole state was run by Democrats, you know, the Dixiecrats at that time. And so they were demanding an opportunity to participate in the party. So out of that convention um, came a, um, a resolution that they called upon a special equal rights committee or commission to, and they went around all over the country and they heard the stories about people trying to participate in the Democratic Party, trying to have a vote, trying to, to, to get candidates. I mean, all this, when you think about what does a party do, right? You know, that level of participation. And from that, they put together a recommendations that the DNC did adopt and they were they, they they put these into a policy statement called the six basic elements of an open party and this right here this is the this is the report of that um, of one of those committees and it talks about you know all these are like really basic things like if you're going to have a meeting <laughs> You got to let people know when the meeting is. You got to know where it's at. You got to give them uh, some notice. You can't discriminate against people. You can't have um, a uh, an oath of loyalty. Um, you have to have it at a time and a place. Like, I mean, that are reasonable what people can attend. In 19, no, I'm sorry. In 2000, either 18 or 19. I went to a meeting that I just hunted down and found out about it. Oh, and a state party meeting. State, state party meeting. They would not let me, well, it was Democratic, uh, it was a Democratic group. I walked into this meeting and they asked me to leave. Another meeting, it was a committee meeting. They had it in somebody's hotel room at 10 o'clock at night. These are things that happened back uh, uh, in the 1960s that kept people out. They are still doing these things. Now, I don't think a lot of political change happens in a hotel room at 10 o'clock at night. That's not what usually goes on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just saying. So, the, so at some point in the early 70s, they required the, the National Party, and this is all in the middle of the civil rights stuff, they required for these six basic elements to be that every state party include them in their party rules, right? So at some point, I, I've been able to uncover this. These are the, the bylaws of the Democratic Party um, as far back as I have is 2007. And then they, they began striking things out. So you can kind of see at some point they had the six basic elements in here. But then they started, they, they, they cut them. So here they are. This, it would be A, B, one, two, three, four. All these were supposed to be these rules, right? They have, they systematically started gutting. They were like almost word for word, and they began gutting them in 2007. Now, this big piece right here that t says that the state party shall publicize and fully in such a manner as to assure notice to all interested parties a full description of the legal and practical procedures for the selection of Democratic Party officers and representatives on all levels. So not just the state party, but down on the county level. And then here, uh, that the same thing to that they will fully publicize um, the legal and practical qualifications of officers, right? So this was gutted completely gutted. Guess when? Last year. Two months after the 2016 state convention, <laughs> where the Bernie Sanders delegates took over the state convention. Uh, so they basically bent the rules or disregarded the rules to neutralize you on unruly progressives. I can't mm -hmm. prove it, but 
the Bernie Sanders people took over, because he was so popular, we had all the delegates, not all, but like the majority of the delegates, took over the state convention, passed a progressive, like one of the most progressive platforms in the nation. I was a delegate to the national convention, went to the national convention. I, didn't, I don't even know the meeting that this happened, and I was paying attention. They had a meeting. And, the, and they, I mean, they had already been gutting things. They changed fully pu publicized to the, the time and place for all public meetings shall be publicized um, in such a manner as to assure timely notice to all interested persons. They cut that and changed it to at least five calendar days. So basically, so that people don't get lost in the weeds. I'm sorry. Right, I'm off, right, off, right, off, right off the Bernie uh, momentum, they basically gutted their own rules to essentially hoodwink and to keep people from participating keep progressives from participating I mean, and to me it's not just progressives they kept anybody else i mean a lot of people are making this thing about oh it's just the you know those hippie progressives versus the normal people you know it's it has not, they kept regular people out i mean i know people who are probably rather conservative that are pissed off at the party. You know what I mean? They kept everybody out by not letting people know about that. And I think that it's significant that two very, very important pieces of that were gutted literally two months after that state convention. Mm -hmm. And it kind of corresponds with the National uh, Democratic Party, who in response to, I mean, one of the most experienced, you could say, uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, I don't, I don't think her experience uh, ended up with good results, but essentially losing to a game show host, and mm -hmm. that lesson, instead of actually, I don't know, maybe shifting some policies uh, and shifting kind of more towards progressives, uh, seeing that your candidate, who basically ran on the other guy's Lucifer, uh, lost. Uh, they just moved further to the right after 2016 and basically made Russia the reason that the Democratic Party lost. So on the national level, on the state level, it looks like instead of actually responding to why they were losing, they just decided to cut out, whether it be progressives, minorities, other people, uh, basically pretend that the political winds aren't shifting so that they could maintain power. Yes. Yeah. Bernie Sanders said a long, long time ago, and I, I, it always comes back, that the Democratic Party, the leadership of the Democratic Party, would go down with the, the Titanic as long as they're in first-class seats. Yeah. And that is a true story. Yeah. And you see that on every level. They don't care the nosedive that this party is in as long as they are in control of the nosedive. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me ask you, too, uh, obviously West Virginia is overwhelmingly white, but I mean, black people do live here, Asian mm -hmm. people do live here, LGBTQ, um, you know, other uh, dis disabled, under, under, youth. Uh, youth. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, the state party was supposed to have some type of affirmative action plan. Mm -hmm. Be it was in the DNC's charter in the 1970s. 1974. Uh, 1974, mm -hmm. they never did it. Um, right. And only recently, did they, you know, grant that there would be an affirmative action committee, uh, other committees too, LGBTQ, Asian, disabled? Caucuses. Caucuses, mm -hmm. excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, but then it was the white leadership trying to set the plans for black party members mm -hmm. as well as other party members. So it seems to me whether it be trying to block out progressives or even minority vo uh, voices, uh, there's kind of a subtle white supremacy going on here yes. in the state party. If you, if you want an example of systemic racism, all you got to do is look at the West Virginia Democratic Party. I mean, that is all you have to do. They have that thing that I showed you just a minute ago. The, those, those six basic elements were put in place to primarily for those historically underrepresented groups. They cut those out to keep people from participating. Black people, Asian, uh, Native American, um, uh, youth, disabled people, LGBTQ, all of those things were 
there for all Democrats, but very much them. And they gutted those. And they had the opportunity because we filed these challenges. We came, you know, this is very in the weeds, but we filed challenges. We negotiated a memorandum of understanding to get an affirmative action program, to get an affirmative action plan, and the chair of the party. And if you watch that meeting, she's like, well, we have to get this done. We have to get this done because we're on this deadline. She's known for a year that that has to be done and has lied and dragged her feet. I mean, it is not, it wasn't. It, w it didn't just sneak up on her. She knew it, and we have the evidence of it was it was intentional to deny people. And she changed the agenda. She changed the agenda to keep the people from being elected at the time that they were supposed to and have a discussion. She just kicked them out. She just ejected them out of the meeting so that they could not participate in that discussion. I mean, I don't. You know, and you say, well, there's, you know, West Virginia's kind of white. Yeah, West Virginia is white. But youth, the young people make up 26% of the people who elect Democrats. That's, that's over a fourth. People who are disabled make up 24% of the people who elect de Democrats. Right there, assuming that there's not a, I mean, of course, there's some overlap between those. But still, that's, that's close to 50% of the people who elect Democrats. You have 8% LGBTQ, you have 6% African American, and then the other ones are like 2% or 1%, but still, they have a right to have a voice. So, but now, we are up to over 50% of the people who elect, who vote for Democrats, are in this these historically underrepresented groups. Why would you not want to give them a voice in the party? Because in their mind, maybe it would uh, push away conservative voters. It seems like they're trying to placate Republican voters on. Uh, they're trying to placate Joe Manchin. Say that again. They're trying to placate Joe Manchin, so, and keep a to keep a core group of people who control the party, control the messaging, and control the money flowing in the support that where they want that to go. Tell me more about the money. Where do they want the money to go? Well, um, I, I probably have it with me if, if, I, if I look. But the, I remember, um, okay, you probably are familiar with coordinated campaigns. Um, basically, um, the, uh, the Democratic Party has these different uh, PACs, and um, the, you have coordinated campaigns. So if uh, Joe Manchin, whoever's at the top of the ticket, uh, they send money to support him, but they also can negotiate that to where it helps your down ballot people as well. So the Democratic Party, instead of utilizing that money to 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 support like the whole ticket, um, they I mean, if you look at how they use that money, it, it's almost every single time to um, to support Joe Manchin, uh, they send out horrible flyers, you know mailers. Um, they sent out when he was running, uh, uh, talking about how many, how, how, what percentage of time he votes, uh, supports uh, Donald Trump's agenda, uh, things like that. I mean, these are things that they, that the Democratic Party is using money to, to uh, prop up. So um, the Democratic and, Party spending money to say Joe Manchin is on Team Trump, yes, basically. Yes, I have, I have a copy of that flyer if you want it. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, but and then, but think about how, how much that whatever that that mailer cost probably uh, let's just say twenty thousand dollars to go out all over um, probably more I don't know but you know what could that what could that have said that also included uh, your other your other congressional democratic candidates what could it conclude that have uh, you know other down ballot candidates see what I'm saying like that it, it's never used to help the party it's always used solely for Joe Manchin 